as we talk about, and it's in both sections, it's in, in, the, in the new book, it's in section 2.1 uh, two, and 2.2. Two, two. In the uh, old book, that would have been section 3.1 and 3.2. Both of those check sections talk about graphing lines. Okay, so if you do the homework problems, you'll, you'll see it says graph lines. The problem that I find when students take the test is when I tell them the graph and I don't tell them how to do it, then they just kind of sit there going like, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to even do. Okay? And, and what I've heard a lot in the years I've done this is this. Well, I know it's a straight line. Well, graph it. All right? There you go. That's a line. You can't just draw a random line up there and think it's right. Okay? It's got to be a very specific one. Now, how do you go about doing this? The first thing to identify is what type of equation do we have? Do we have one that is in y equals mxb form? Do we have it in slope-intercept form? Or do we have it in some other form that's not slope-intercept form? If it is in slope-intercept form, if it is in slope-intercept form, at that moment, at that moment, all we have to do is go to the y-intercept, plot a dot, okay? If you will, if you will, and if you've ever been to a mall, this is like the mall board, and this dot would be like the you are here, right? That's where you're starting at. You are starting right here. And then from there, you will do rise over run. And you will go up three. One, two, three. And over seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Look at there. Fix that right up. Now, once you have these two points, at that point, you would certainly be able to draw a line that goes through them. And make sure it extends both ways. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's the way that would work. And that really requires two things. Number one, where do you start? That's the first thing you got to figure out. Where are you going to start? And you will start at whatever this number is. And then the second thing you got to figure out is where do you move? And you will move whatever the slope is using rise over run. Now, at that moment, at that moment, some of you will become, and I hate to use the term, especially on the internet, you become mathematical robots. Where you go like this. That does not look like that. I will make that look like that. And then you're just like, you're like, look, one way or the other, this is going to end up being y equals mx plus b. And then once I do that, I'll continue on. And that, listen, that's cool. I'm down with that. All right. Here's my thing. Just get the damn answer right. I mean, honestly, I, I, don't, I don't understand the need. I don't understand the need to always look great when you're doing it. Just shit, get it right. For my football guys, if you're running the ball and getting six yards every time, keep doing it. Eventually you'll score. You're going to score. And then when you get it back, 
Do it again. All right. My, my point simply is, if you solving this for Y is the way that you understand it, then get it there every single time. I'm fine with it. Does that make sense? I'm fine with that. Now, if you want options, if you want options, I offer you this. Find the x-intercept. Find the y-intercept. How do you find the x-intercept? Plug in y is 0. So 3x minus 2 times 0 equals negative 12, and x is going to be equal to negative 4. Do we agree? How do you find the y-intercept? Plug in x is 0, so 3 times 0. Three times zero but minus two y equals negative twelve and y is equal to six. Alright. So when you know that y is six and you know that x is negative four, I offer this as an alternative way to graph. And then once you get those two points, connect them with the line. Okay. Ideally, ideally, this is a lot like driving. In the sense that you would know more than one way to get somewhere. Okay, uh, I think I said before, I mean, it's one of the things I found, but, you know, my son's 15 and has just started to drive. I'm just astounded that he has no idea where the hell he's going. And that he'll go down roads. I'm like, where are you going? Well, if I take this road, I get to Cypress Gardens Boulevard. And if I get to Cypress Gardens Boulevard, I can find my way around anywhere. But he has to get to Cypress Gardens Boulevard first. Like, everywhere he goes, let's go to Cypress Gardens Boulevard first. <laughs> okay. Um have options for me this is what i look at when i have an equation if i have an equation let's say that the equation is y equals 5 6 x minus 2 when i see that it's in this form i will immediately plot the y-intercept go up 5 over 6 1 2 3 4 5 one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'll plot that point, and then I'll draw the line. If, on the other hand, I see uh, 4x minus 5y equals 20, if I see the x and y on the same side of the equation, I will almost always go to x and y intercept. And the reason why I do is if they're on the same side, when you plug in x is 0, all you have is a one-step equation. There's nothing to move. When you plug in y is 0, if they're on the same side, you'll get a one-step equation. So solving these actually isn't even that hard. Does that make sense? So that's the way I do it. If the x's are y on the same side, I'll use the x and y I'll use the x and y intercepts. If they're on opposite sides, notice that the x and y are on opposite sides, then I'll use slope intercept form. Does that make sense? Now, notice I said I. You have to get it right. However that is. Okay, I've seen people who always solve for y. I've seen people who always do the x and y intercepts, which makes no sense to me, but I, if you're getting it right, more power to you. 
Peace and love. All right. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you two more to try on your own. All right. We're going to go y equals negative two-thirds x plus four. And we're going to go 3x plus 5y equals negative 15. At this point, I will press pause and give everybody a chance to work it. If you're watching at home, you probably pause too. Huh? Plus four. All right, let's go ahead and do this. All right, here we go. Oh, 
Oh, great. I never pressed pause. My bad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you fast forwarded. All right, let's take a look. One, two, three, four. We're going to go down two. One, two, over three. So we're here. All right. If your line doesn't go through your dot, make the dot bigger. All right. From here, I'm going to find the x and y intercepts. Again, could you solve for y? Absolutely, but I'm not going to. Take 3 divided by negative 15. Plug in y is 0. I'm trying to figure out where to do that at. Still feeling really bad about the whole not pressing pause thing. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> People won't even watch it. They're like, 15 minutes? Hell no. <laughs> Plug it in y is 0. You'll get x equals negative 5. Plug it in x is 0. You'll get y equals negative uh, y equals negative three. Once you got those two dots, make dot bigger. <laughs> right now, people go like this. I'm a graph. <laughs> All right. Any questions on that? So, I'll stop the video. Love you.